Hi, I'm Michelle and I'm YPAD's Global Mentoring Coordinator. Hi, I'm Sarah and I'm the former Mentoring Coordinator with the Youth and Landscapes Initiative and the International Forestry Students Association. And today we're talking about selecting and matching mentees and mentors. So Sarah, can you step us through how you select mentees for an event-based mentoring program? Sure, so there's actually a couple of different approaches that I've taken uh, for different event-based programs that I've run. Um, and really the question and the difference between these approaches is um, how much you're working together with the conference coordinators um, and how much you're integrating the mentoring program application and registration into the event registration process. So one approach that we've taken is um, you work very closely with the event coordinators from the start and when they um, open up registration for the conference or event or whatever it is, there's a number of questions in that um, that relate to people signing up, not only registering their interest to take part in the mentoring program, but also answering some specific questions that uh, we've defined that are questions that we're wanting to know that will help us inform the matching process. So questions maybe around um, their particular interests or their motivations for taking part, anything that we've identified as important for the matching. Um, after that process, um, maybe um, a few periods of every couple of months, uh, the event coordinators will provide us with um, a list of all registrations um, and they'll provide us with the names of everyone who's expressed interest in mentoring and all of their responses. So um, people need to know that those responses will be provided to a mentoring team as well. And then based on that data, um, we generally send out an email to everyone just to confirm that they're still interested. But that's all, just a yes or no. And then we go through matching. So that's really fully integrated into the event program. Um, it has benefits in that people aren't needing to fill out multiple forms. It's all just one clean, easy process when they sign up for the event. Um, you do need to make sure that you have a good relationship with the event coordinators because you need to have really close communication. They need to be able to provide you with everyone's information as soon as you ask for it. Um, and obviously you need to make sure that their registration system is set up in a way that can manage the kind of questions that you're asking. So um, that's something you need to consider. The other approach we've had is um, just including a general question in the registration form, um, either asking for people's age, you know, if they're a young professional or a student, um, or maybe just asking for a general expression of interest. And then as the mentoring coordination team, we actually send out a separate email or a separate form to people um, and run the mentoring registration separately. Um, so the upside with that is, again, we can work on our own timeframes, we can have direct communication with everyone who's interested. Um, but again, the downside is you might not get people responding, people might get survey or registration form fatigue. So it's sort of something that you have to balance. Um, we find when it works that integrating it into a registration form is a really, really good approach. Um, but again, you've just got to have the timelines and the communication with the, the event coordinators really clear. Mm. Mm, great. So they call you the landscapes matchmaker. Can you tell us a bit about your process of matching mentees and mentors and what makes it unique? <laughs> sure. Um, for event-based programs, look, <clears throat> we have a number of criteria that are quite standard across the events we use, so criteria for, for matching mentors with mentees. These are things such as um, where they're located, what language they speak, you know, what topic at the event they're most interested in. So these are kind of basic things that, that we look at um, when we're trying to match people. But I found that actually doing, doing your homework, doing a little bit of extra research really goes a long way. Um, so searching for people, just Googling people's names, finding out maybe where they've worked, um, you know, what countries they've worked in, if they've got a particular research interest, even if they have a particular personal interest like a sport or a hobby or something. Um, finding out those little pieces of information that might not necessarily relate to the skills that you're wanting to build through the mentoring program. It might have nothing to do with their professional um, role or situation, but they're little things that um, if the mentor and mentee have something like that in common, it can be a really great way for them to make a first connection. Mm, great. And can you tell us a story about one particularly successful match that you've made? Sure. So it was at the 2014 Global Landscapes Forum, which was actually the first time we'd run this um, event-based mentoring program. And we had um, maybe 20 to 30 young people in the end who we ended up matching with senior professionals. 
Um, the, the basic things that we were matching them on were what global landscape forum theme they were most interested in, um, language, particularly Spanish or English, because it was the event was held in Lima. Um, but then again, particularly because this was the first time I'd done it, I really wanted to find out as much information about people as I could. Um, and I had one young woman who was a, a young Colombian woman, and she'd set up a youth-led NGO um, focusing on environmental education in a certain part of Colombia. And her background was a little bit different to other mentees. She had a background, I think, in international relations and law. Um, so there wasn't anyone directly aligned with that background who I could see when I, when I did a first review of all the mentors. Um, but then going through and searching um, online all the background of these different mentors, I found a blog post written by one of them uh, that was talking about his experience working in Colombia maybe 10 years ago and spending a lot of time living there and working there and both the professional and personal connections that he really felt with that country. So I thought, actually, this is really great. They've worked in the same area. He has this really strong connection to this country. Um, he worked for an um, environmental development fund. So there was that <clears throat> kind of youth development, international relations kind of aspect as well. So I matched them up. And as soon as I sent the introduction email, they both wrote back saying, this is just such an amazing match. And I don't know how you knew that I had this background in Colombia, but I'm just so excited to meet her. And they were talking in Spanish. Um, and that's a match that, you know, I've seen continue on for years and years. I met them both uh, about a year later in Paris. They met up at the Global Landscape Forum again. Um, and it's just been really wonderful seeing that really personal connection that's growing between them. And it really has turned into a long-term mentoring relationship. Mm, I got goosebumps listening to that. How beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thanks so much again, Sarah. Thanks, Michelle.